Hi, I'm Chris Parker from FluentInMandarin.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about three things. What resources do you need to study Chinese? How should you start to learn? And how can you progress? So what resources do you need? A lot of people pay too much attention to what books, CDs, or software they start with, when the most important thing is always getting started. Still, my advice would be to find materials that have text in Chinese characters, pinyin, which is the way you write the sounds of Chinese using the Roman alphabet, and decent glossaries or English translations. Also, the more CDs or recordings to go along with the course, the better, and avoid podcasts or courses that have a lot of English chat. In fact, I created my own beginner's video course with the help of native speakers, Survive in Chinese, because I wanted people to be able to understand the basics of Chinese quickly for practical use. You can go to my website and check it out there. Other beginner's courses that I like and I've used before include FSI Chinese, although it has limited Chinese characters, Pimsleur, and Asimil. People often ask me which course is the best, and the answer is, firstly, different people are suited to different approaches, so you can just go along with your instinct and choose what appeals to you. And secondly, no beginner's course can teach you everything and make you fluent on its own, so I recommend that you work through several different courses. Okay, so apart from courses, what else do you need? Well, this is the 21st century, and software and technology help so much in learning Chinese. Looking up words in paper dictionaries can be difficult with Chinese, and it takes a lot of time. So I recommend getting electronic dictionaries for your computer and for your smartphone. I'll put all the links in the description to this video. For PCs, I recommend the dictionary software Lingos. You can type in English or Chinese words and look them up. I also recommend getting a reading tool for your computer, like Dim Sum or Wenling. You can just copy and paste a Chinese text into the software and then you move your mouse over characters that you don't know and the software will tell you what they mean in English. This comes in so useful as you continue to learn. I also recommend getting the dictionary for your smartphone, Pleco or Pleco, whatever you call it. So go to the App Store on your phone and you can find it. It's available for Android smartphones, iPhone and iPad. You can look up words anywhere you are, and you can just write a Chinese character onto the screen of your phone, and even if you don't write it properly, the software will recognize it and tell you the pronunciation and the meaning. Very, very useful, and these are amazing tools um, that I use still eight years later, almost every day. I also recommend the website Arch Chinese. Again, I'll put the link in the description. This website can tell you how to write any Chinese character you want. Every time you want to learn a character, copy and paste it into the website and the software will tell you how to write the character stroke by stroke so you can just copy along exactly with the example until you get it. That's how I learned to write Chinese. I just followed the examples given by this kind of software so many times that I learned to write almost instinctively over a long time. Some of the programs that I've already mentioned, Dim Sum, Wenlin and Plico will also do this for you. Next I recommend that you get software to type in Chinese. To type characters in, in Chinese into your computer, you enter their pronunciation in the Roman alphabet using a normal keyboard. I talk about how to do this on my blog and on other videos. I recommend the software Sogo Pinyin, which is very, very popular in China, and it's much better than the solutions that come with Windows. If you can type in Chinese, then you can enter words into your computer and look them up very easily in electronic uh, dictionaries and other software. To memorize vocabulary, I recommend that you get the free program Anki, which is basically like paper flashcards, but on your computer or phone. You can put in new words that you learn, and the computer will test you. Remember to learn whole sentences, not just individual words, so you actually know how to use the vocabulary in context. Okay, so that's resources. So how do you actually start out learning Chinese? Well, I recommend you that you start by familiarizing yourself with the sounds of Mandarin Chinese. And the good news is that there are not as many of them as there are in some other languages. You need to get familiar with pinyin, which, as I said, is the way that you write the sounds of Chinese using the Roman alphabet. And it's the pronunciation guide you see in textbooks and dictionaries. Mandarin Chinese has four tones, which are four different ways of pronouncing each syllable. For more information about this, I've done a video introduction to pronunciation. To understand how the sounds of Chinese work, you can download the Chinese pod pinyin chart tool and practice all of the sounds and tones. Later, as you learn vocabulary, it's important to learn what tone each syllable is pronounced in and start speaking very slowly to make sure that you get these tones right every time and speed up slowly. When you've used this software and you're familiar with how pinyin works and the sound of the language and the tones, then you're ready to get stuck into your learning materials. You don't have to memorize all the sounds just yet, but just try to get used to the sounds of the language. 
Whichever course you choose, I recommend that you do something every day, even if it's only 15 minutes, but preferably 30 to 45 minutes at, at least a few times a week. Nobody wants to waste time, but trying to work too quickly is also not effective. Let me put this in perspective. You might be able to read through a thick book in two weeks, but you could also read through it in three months. So which way are you going to remember more of it? It's the same with language learning. Make your study active, not passive, from day one. Don't just stick a CD on or flick through a textbook or vocabulary lists. Make your language study active. Look up words that you see or you hear that you don't know and put full sentences including these words into your vocabulary software and learn a bit every day. Get your mouth moving from day one. Read texts out loud yourself. Try translating text to or from your native language. Record yourself and try to listen for your mistakes or ask a native speaker to give you some tips. If you're anything like me, you can't just read a text in a book once and remember everything, so go back and listen to CDs many times, translate and try to reproduce conversations yourself until you can recall it. Try to work through a full course actively in this way, but if you're not enjoying a particular course then don't get frustrated, you can always try a different one. By working for say 30 minutes every day you can make huge progress in a short time. So how should you face the challenge of Chinese characters? Well, there is a lot to learn, and I would advise choosing between either simplified or traditional characters at the beginning. Watch my other videos to find out more information about this. As I said before, at the very beginning try to use materials that have Chinese characters and pinyin pronunciation guides included. If your aim is just to learn to communicate in the language and you don't have time for characters, that's fine, but I recommend you learn to at least read and recognize them along with the courses you study. It's much easier to recognize characters than it is to write them. You can work through learning to write the characters in your general course slowly. Don't worry if you get behind with character learning. It always happens. Use the websites and the software I recommended to find out how to write the characters and follow the guidelines exactly until you get it. Subscribe and watch my other videos about Chinese characters for a more detailed explanation. Some people talk about the list of the most frequently used Chinese characters. I'll, I'll include a link to it as well. While I don't recommend learning characters from a list or out of context, this list can be good to revise from or to fill in gaps in your knowledge. And the top 3,000 characters essentially cover everything in Chinese. So how do you build up fluency in speaking Chinese? I've done a few separate videos about this, but to pr put it briefly, it's a matter of practice. A lot of people listen to hours of materials but really struggle when they end up speaking to a native speaker. I've found a way to solve this problem. What I do is I record five minute dialogues of myself in my native language, English, talking about my life, my job, my future plans, and each of my hobbies and other topics. Then I play these recordings back to myself and I try to put everything into Chinese or into the foreign language. And when I get stuck, I look up words or I pause and I ask somebody. Then I try this again, I l listen to the recording again and I try to say the things in Chinese again and build up my fluency gradually. I talk about this technique in another video. Another thing you can do is to pra practice describing what you see around you in Chinese or saying what you did that day in Chinese. Other than that, the best way to practice speaking is of course to speak to native speakers. So how do you progress? Well, unfortunately, the marketing teams for many language learning products like to persuade people that they will become fluent just by completing one course, which is just not going to be possible. In fact, I recommend working through two to three beginners courses. You will revise a lot of things, but also you'll learn a lot of new things, because each course is different. So just keep going. But after you've worked through a couple of beginners courses, where do you go to next? When you're choosing more materials, remember to keep them at what Stephen Krashen, who's a language acquisition expert, calls the plus one level. If you can understand everything, it means the materials are too easy for you and you won't be learning much. If you can hardly understand anything, then you're going to waste too much time going through a text with a dictionary or you won't understand any of the recording and you'll lose confidence. Therefore, you should choose materials that are one step harder than what you already know. If you can understand, say, 60 to 70 percent of the materials, then they're probably suitable for you. It seems like a big jump from understanding material for learners and understanding authentic material in Chinese. So here are some tips. Try courses for intermediate learners to bridge the gap or listening courses with vocabulary or text to go along with them. I also recommend downloading short programs or podcasts in Chinese no longer than 15 minutes long. 
Listen to them slowly and don't just ignore things that you can't understand because if you do, then you're not going to improve. The first time round, pause and try to look up words that you don't know in a dictionary and write down the vocab. Try to get used to typing in Chinese words that you hear using pinyin into your computer or into dictionary software on your phone to look them up. This will train your ear and your vocabulary. Then go back to the beginning of the recording and listen again in full. It's painful to have to work through material like this slowly, but it will help you and it will teach you a lot of real Chinese vocab. Pick materials that also related to things that you're interested in. You can also watch simpler TV entertainment and chat shows because most Chinese TV has subtitles to help you. You can continue to speak with native speakers, trying to expand the variety of topics that you can talk about. You can study from bilingual texts or translations, and you can also learn from Chinese subtitles of t English TV shows, which you can find online. All of these activities will be helpful. Remember that you can vary the activities that you do. If one particular activity gets boring, then just move on to a different activity and keep going. Sometimes you might want to work through texts in a lot of detail, looking up a lot of things. Sometimes you might want to listen to a little bit more without getting so involved and listen for rhythm and try to pick up the general gist. Don't worry about making mistakes. Chinese people love foreigners learning their language and they're very tolerant to mistakes that you make. You can also learn a lot from listening to your mistakes or asking native speakers to comment about them. Okay, I know that this is a lot of information for a short video, but hopefully by following these tips and techniques, you'll be able to learn Chinese in less time and be speaking comfortably before you know it. Please do help me by liking this video and sharing on Facebook and Google+, etc. And don't forget to subscribe and also check out my website, fluentinmandarin.com, for loads more information. And leave me your comments, so let me know how you're getting on. Thanks for watching.